Hey guys, it's Mr. Guns. I know it's been a little while since I made my last video. Uh, we're sorry about that. We've just been busy and I've been lazy. Uh, what we're going to do today is a departure from what we have done in the past. We're going to do some videos about moultrie feeders, uh, putting out deer feeders for deer on my land. Uh, and I may do a video about some cameras and that kind of thing. We, I'm not as big a hunter as I used to be. I still enjoy hunting. I still support hunting, of course. And but I'm kind of passing it down to the next generation. My kids are doing a little more hunting now, and um, it's just not something I've done as much in, the, in recent years as I did when I was young. I still like to bird hunt quite a bit, but deer hunting, I enjoy going out there, I enjoy being out there, uh, but I haven't, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time deer hunting. Plus my land's kind of small, I don't have deer everywhere, I've just got a few. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to feed them up. Here in Texas, we get a tax exemption for feeding wildlife and things like that if you have a piece of land that you're not really developing. It's originally kind of an agricultural purpose. Some people do uh, cattle or raise hay or whatever it is. Me personally, I got one based on uh, wildlife. So there's a, there's a few requirements. You can do supplemental food, supplemental water, uh, supplemental shelter. There's other criteria, erosion control and uh, things like uh, predator killing. We're, we're going to probably kill a lot of hogs out there. That is something I still enjoy hunting. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to check out these moultrie feeders. Usually when I was younger, either I bought a complete feeder or I was hunting somebody else's feeder or something like that. I've never really put one together. So I've got a couple of them that I bought, a big one and a small one. We're going to put those together and see you know, what we think about how they go together and how they work. And I'll just kind of talk about some of the extra things you got to buy and that sort of stuff. So here we go. Uh, this is my, my junky garage that I'm starting out in, and then we'll move out to the land here in a little while when we, we go to set them up the rest of the way. So I look forward to uh, making this video. Thanks. <laughs> America! All right, so this is the Moultrie Pro Hunter 35 gallon, or I'm sorry, it's a 30 gallon tripod feeder. I've got the 55 over there. There's no sense in making a, a separate video or having a, you know, putting them both together on video or anything like that because it's essentially the same thing. So it comes in this big container here. Uh, this is going to be obviously the feed bucket. This normally has a bolt in it. I've already removed the bolt there just for convenience sake. When you take the lid off, all the contents are down in the bucket. This is how it ships uh, with all the parts and pieces. So I assume that these are going to be the legs here um, that come with it. Sorry about having the sun at my back. I'm, I'm not a videographer. I'm a gun guy. Uh, so bear with me. There's uh, the feeder kit down here that comes in the bucket and then you got this big ring that is going to be the mounts for it so what we're going to do is we're going to put this together and just see how easy it goes together and see how much trouble it is okay so after having studied off screen to appear to be an expert reading the instructions and so forth it comes with the uh, nifty little package of nuts and bolts here like you'd expect to see with any sort of product. We open that up. Hopefully we can do this without losing anything. So I'll spread these out here. There's essentially two sets of, of uh, nuts and bolts. There are the larger bolts that go through the bottom of the feeder container over here and then there are the smaller ones that are used to assemble this bottom piece so this is the piece that's going to fit against the bottom of the feeder bucket itself it's got this little funnel i assume to push the food through this goes up against the bottom of the the barrel you put those together and then these little screws here are going to be what you attach it with Oddly enough, it only comes with two screws despite having four holes. These are standard Phillips head. So we'll put those through there. I guess it needs this little washer on both sides. It looks like there's four washers. So we're gonna put that through. 
pretty tight there. It's pretty short on the bolt itself. So we're gonna attach this little nut. And we're gonna do it on the other side as well. Two washers and a little screw. So we'll put it there, put our bolt through, fat fingering everything. We're gonna flip it over. Drop our washer. This is one of those parts of the video that I should probably do a fast forward section through. All right, there we go. As a complete aside, if you don't have a little tiny socket set, you need to get one. I've got all the big socket sets and that's all well and good. I mean, I've got huge socket sets, but this little guy does 90% of the work that I need and it's teeny tiny and it's portable. So that's my endorsement of the small Craftsman socket set, I guess you'd say. So we're gonna check this size. I'll tell you what size it is once I figure it out. Oh, it looks like it's gonna be one here bigger. It looks like it's gonna end up being a 3 8 well, three eighths is too big. She must be metric. She is metric. One moment. Let me grab my tiny metric set. All right, so here's my tiny metric set, just like I was talking about. So it is going to be, let's try a nine millimeter. It looks about right. It is a nine millimeter, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna take this and tighten this guy up. Like I said, standard Phillips head on the other side. Looks pretty good. Like it's in there pretty well. It might have made sense to drop some Loctite on here or something. I don't have any, but in the long term, I don't know if this thing's gonna try to loosen on us or something. All right, so once we're done, we put these little wings on it. Little wings go on the bottom of the actual bucket itself. Pretty interesting uh, deal. If you look, it's already got the carve out for the head so that way we may not necessarily have to hold both sides. And I'm probably gonna look pretty stupid here trying to put my arm all the way down in this bucket. I guess we'll find out pretty quick, won't we? All right. So there's numerous washers, but I'm assuming that, you know, I mean, we're not gonna put a washer on this side. So maybe they just include a couple extra washers in case you want them. I doubt we're gonna need to double up on the inside. So. I'm going to move this around. I'll go ahead and tell you what the size on the, the actual nut is here. Looks like it's going to be, uh, let's see what that is. That one's too small. That one's a 10 millimeter. Um, let's see if I can find like a 12. 12 too big. 10's too small. Well, that's going to be bizarre if it is a mix of standard and metric. Can't imagine that they're going to do that, but let's look and see. It appears to be 7 16 So maybe they're mixing standard and metric on there. Seems mighty weird, but, you know, it did fit on this side. So they also include little Moultrie sticker with it in case you want that. All right, so we're gonna put it on the bottom of our tripod feeder here. This piece goes up on here like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in into the bottom. This guy's moving around a little bit. Looks 
pretty simple. It's kind of cool too because it's going to keep the the actual unit here uh, that spins the food from hanging off the bottom, which could cause you to break it or something. I like that it's kind of got a quick detach on it. That's kind of cool. So let's go ahead again. This is a seven sixteenths. We're going to take a washer from my container over here. Sorry for reaching across the field there. Said, this is going to be kind of funny trying to reach down in here. I'm not real sure how I'm going to do this actually because I'm not all that coordinated. I guess I'm literally going to. Oh, fell off. Let's try again. I guess I'm literally going to stick my head down in the hole here in just a second and try to attach them. Here comes the wife to help out of nowhere. All right, I'm gonna push it this way where I can get to it. In the bucket, bottom one. You push the bottom one through. Okay. Obviously you want to be pretty careful about over tightening uh, with the plastic here. Uh, that, that does appear to kind of be a two man job. You might need some help or one man and one woman is the case we're here. You may need some, uh, some, some help with that. And then this is kind of a quick detach thing. You just slide it over like this and then it twists. So like, uh, like most QD type anything. So that's that. The last thing that we have left is we have this large ring here. Uh, if I can get it all in frame. There's the big ring. It comes right here with the bolt that, that goes in it. So what we're gonna do, I'm not sure what this long black deal is. There's a long black deal in the package. You can see it. I guess I'm gonna figure out what that is. Maybe that's just extra. Uh, I bet you once this closes up, that just goes around it to, to take up space. No, it actually goes in between. If you can see on the instructions there, it goes in between the ring. So we're gonna put it around. If you look at the bucket itself here, the bucket has these two uh, rings that go around it. So we're gonna put it on the bottom ring. Spread it. Drop it on and kinda of turn it to where we can work with it. And it appears. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up. We're gonna take this guy here in this package. I'll tell you the bolt size here in just a minute. So it comes with a locking nut with a 
with the rubber interior and then it has a lock washer as well. So we're gonna do this is metal, this is not plastic, I just realized. So it's probably not gonna squash very easily. That's a good thing. There is a little bit of tension on this. Uh, it's a little harder to hold together. You gotta kind of squeeze it really good to get enough length. Let's uh let's let it go for a moment. So I don't have to hold that and select the tool itself. Looks like it may end up being a half inch. Nope, a little bigger than a half inch. Looks like it's a nine sixteenths. So we're gonna take our nine sixteenths here. Sticking on, I'm kind of pre prep. All right, so let's kind of get this in the position that we think we want it in. And I'm going to put my lock nut on there. All right, so let's start cranking away. Hopefully it's not spinning too much on me. I'm just tighten it. Sorry for my metal. Let's try this way. Alright, so this is the timer unit itself. <clears throat> it requires a six volt battery. This is a Moultrie brand six volt battery. I bought this thing on Amazon for, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks, something like that, give or take a little bit. Obviously it's got a positive and a negative. Uh, we got these alligator clips here. So we're just gonna take them and hook them up to the battery. Looks like I got power there. All right, and it, it fits in this cup here underneath. It's got a little notch, holds the battery real well, doesn't flop around. Looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the current time, which my watch is, my watch battery's dead. Um, So our current time is, let me go look. Looks like it's about 3.11 p.m. right now. I'm gonna go ahead and set her to 3.12. All right, so we're going to set that. Uh, I don't know how many pounds of food. Let's say that I'm going to put 40 pounds of food in there for now, or I'm sorry, 80 pounds of food. I know that's not a lot, uh, but I'm just setting up to test it. There's a, a handy little chart in here in the manual that shows you about how much food uh, gets distributed. Uh, per seconds of feeding. This one's the, the French instructions. My other ones are laying around somewhere, but I've already looked at the chart. I'm gonna run it about, uh, about 10 seconds. That's about 2.4 pounds of food. I'm gonna run it twice a day. And uh, so that's gonna throw out a, about four pounds or four and a half pounds, almost five pounds of stuff. So if I throw 80 pounds in there, uh, 80 divided by five is, whatever that is, five going to eight one time. That's about, about two weeks worth of feed, give or take. So I'm gonna set the 80 pounds in there. Uh, current time is right. Set timer one. Let's, uh, let's run that thing about 6.30 in the morning. There's a, you can look online, see what time people say to do it. We said that we were gonna run it for about, 10 seconds. Set timer two. Well, let's run it at, uh, let's go about 5.30 p.m. It's, it's getting dark before six right now because it's winter time here in Texas. Uh, we're about the, about the 16th of December, I think, today. Uh, we're gonna run her for another 10 seconds there too. 
Timer three, timer four. I'm leaving those at zero seconds because they're just not gonna run. Timer five at zero seconds. So that's pretty much it. You can run it up six times a day. It says about 16 days of feed remaining. So uh, that, that corresponds with that chart. That's really all there is to setting this thing up. And so now we're just gonna hang it on the bottom over here of the feeder. It hangs on the bottom. We'll put our nifty little cover on here. So you put the cover on, it protects it from the elements and that kind of stuff. And that's that. All right. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna, we'll go and uh, set these up here in just a minute and, and see how they work. And then I got some other stuff I'm gonna throw out with it and then we'll do some other stuff. Alrighty. All right, so I got this little old spot over here. It's a wet spot. Uh, there's a fair amount of deer tracks and hog tracks around this thing. Then I got this big old oak tree right here and it's constantly dropping acorns, but you can see they kind of been milled through because it's getting late in the season. But, so we're gonna try to throw this thing together and put the legs on it and see how it works out. Alright. So you got the leg come in a box like this. We got our plug out here with us. Alright, so the legs come in the box. It's a little bit here like this. About like what you'd expect. comes with a dozen legs, uh, which there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I guess we're going to have to use four per side to try to get it to distribute the corn and everything. So we'll roll it over. Like that. Stick another one in there. I gotta try to lift it up. Let's see how stupid I look trying to get this thing to stand up. I am not the most coordinated human that ever lived. <clears throat> yeah, that's not too bad. Alright. Get the spread out. Support the weight. And there she is. Looks pretty good. Now we're gonna throw some corn in there. Pretty much got to have a uh, ladder to do that with. So I'm trying to get it kind of square. I think it's pretty square. That band may be a little bit off around the outside there. But it's looking pretty good as it is. So I'm gonna go grab me a couple bags of corn. Nice, That's just a regular old corn tractor supply, 40 pound bag. It's like 
It needs to come back just a little bit, but. We'll uh, open that up. That's dumb things we do, see? So there we go. How about we put the spreader underneath? That was on purpose. We need to get it started. Lesson learned. <laughs> One more bag here. Cutter open. See how much corn this thing will hold. About 80 pounds I put in there is really only going up about this high. It's about two weeks worth, according to the thing, 16 days. But uh, I just kind of want to get started with it. So we're going to go over here. We're going to grab the lid. Spread out, put the lid on it. It's on there pretty good. I'm just gonna finger tighten this thing down. I don't think this band's really gonna come loose. We just want it where it's not going to expand much. That's pretty solid. I'll be all right. So that's it. We are uh, got a new military feeder. And we're going to see how it does this season. I won't show you the setting up of my second one over there because it's just the same process. But it ought to be pretty cool. And uh, hopefully it'll work real good. Anyway. If you like the video, go ahead and subscribe to us or, or do a uh, click like or, or comment or whatever you want to do. All right, talk to y'all later. Hey guys, it's Mr. Guns. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was cool, go ahead and like and subscribe. We should have a bunch of cool stuff coming in the future too. Uh, or follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you just want to get good gun deals or see what we got going on. The links will be in the descriptions below. So thanks for watching the video and we hope you'll follow us in the future.